here. Irma Johnson. Here. Jennifer Oberlin. Rebecca Turner. Here. Stuart Stoltz. Brittany Sands. Yeah. We do have a quorum. Okay. Uh, let's look at our minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Oh, great. We have a motion. Second. Are all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Let's get started with number one with our chairperson's report, administrative approvals. Good evening. Uh, Vicki Berenberg, Historic Preservation Officer, and I have the administrative approvals for the period from March 10th, 2023 to April 10th, 2023. In the Special Historic Zoning District, there are two uh, roof replacement at 105 Watson Court and non-historic window replacement on a non-contributing building at 203 Wilkinson Street. Uh, in the Special Capital Zoning District, we have four um, at 725 Woodland, which is one of the cases you're going to be reviewing this evening. Um, the applicant renewed their certificate of appropriateness for demolition um, per the requirements of Article 17. And at 127 East Todd Street, um, there was an application for an 8 by 10 foot storage building. 412 Logan, uh, removal of vinyl siding and replacement with hardy board, uh, window replacement of non-historic windows and roof replacement in kind. 505-507 uh, Marshall Court, uh, replace the wood privacy fence in kind and replace the existing gate. And in the Central Business Zoning District, we have one at 201-205 West Main for a 20 inch by 17 and a half inch fascia sign. And that's all. <coughs> Secretary, are you ready to read the number three, please? Number two. Number two. In accordance with Articles 4, 16, and 17 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Chad Peach is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to enclose an open gallery on the first floor on the west side of the building located at 215 West Main Street. The property is more particularly identified as PBA map number 061-2414-017.01. Okay, our first case this evening is in the Central Business Zoning District. This is at 215 West Main Street. Uh, this building is being converted from offices to apartments and the applicant is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to enclose the open gallery um, that is on the west side of the building and install windows in the openings. Um, this is a non-contributing building. It was built in 1992 and it is less than 50 years of age. Generally, uh, design guidelines can be more flexible with non-contributing buildings, but in this case, there's nothing about this proposal um, that does not meet the, the existing design guidelines. <clears throat> Here is a PVA map showing the location of the property. Here is a rendering provided by the applicant of the west side of the building at Lewis Street showing how the open walls uh, on the first floor <clears throat> will be enclosed with um, a rusticated split face concrete block which is already existing on the building. Um, this wall in the locations where the block is going to be added, it'll be slightly recessed, so you will still be able to read the architectural details of what exists right now. Um, and the windows will match those previously installed on this elevation and also on the front at the first floor <coughs> level. Here's a photo of that open gallery as it currently exists. Here's a view down Lewis Street. This is a view, uh, two more views, one from the back. 
And this is a view from the front showing the existing storefront window, which the applicant has said they are going to duplicate in that front opening. This is the east side of the structure, which is also enclosed. It's already enclosed, so now they'll match. So based on the information contained in the application and staff's evaluation within the context of the property's significance, key features, integrity, neighborhood character, and preservation goals for the city of Frankfurt, uh, staff recommends the ARB issue a certificate of appropriateness for this proposal. The plans are compatible in concept with the zoning regulations, design guidelines, and the suggested findings on page three of your staff report. Um, if the ARB elects to issue a COA for this request, staff recommends the following conditions be applied. Um, and I'd like to make an amendment actually to what is in your staff report um, because I think it says a building permit will be obtained. There is already a building permit because they have been doing interior work. So the building permit will be amended <coughs> to include the work in this request and any additional projects requiring a zoning or building permit shall require review and approval by the ARB unless a certificate of no exterior effect is issued. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have someone here representing this? Yes, ma'am. I'm Chad Peach. Can you give us your name and address, please? Chad Peach, the owner of the property at 315 West Main Street, address 2104 Lawrenceburg Road, Frankfurt. Thank you. Do you agree with the suggestions and yes, all of the staff's report? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Peach? Is there anything you'd like us to know about? No, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> converting it to apartments, the square footage became really critical uh, to make the floor plans work. Second and third floor are identical as far as the layout. When we got to the first floor with that space not included inside the building, it was going to have a really big impact on our floor plans for the first floor. And so uh, originally we had proposed a restaurant for that area but we couldn't get through division of plumbing without knowing exactly the tenant and who was gonna go in there. And so after six months of wait time, we just said, well, we'll convert that area to apartments. Um, once we made that commitment, then that's when we needed the square footage. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do we have any discussion? No, I'm okay. good. I'm ready to entertain a motion. I will make a motion that we approve the certificate of appropriateness uh, at 215 West Main Street to enclose an open gallery on the first floor of the west side of the building based on the findings of fact on page three as well as the staff suggestions that contain an amendment to item number one. Second. Ms. Turner? Uh, yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. In accordance with Articles 4, 13, 17, and 18 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Karen Finnan of 1 NK, NKY Alliance is requesting a variance and certificate of appropriateness to construct a monument sign at 418 Capitol Avenue. The property is more particularly identified as PVA map number 062 06005.00. Okay, um, <clears throat> excuse me. This application is for a variance and a certificate of appropriateness for a monument sign at 418 Capitol Avenue. Um, this is a case that you may recognize from a previous application. Um, this particular property is located in the Special Capital Historic Zoning District. It was built in 1927. 
It is a, a late craftsman, colonial revival style house. It was the home of Dyke Hazelrig, who was a <coughs> prominent attorney in Frankfurt. And the building is a contributing structure to the South Frankfurt National Register District. It is currently being used by one Northern Kentucky Alliance. Um, and as I said, they are proposing to install a monument sign in the front of the building. They previously submitted an application for a variance in a COA last year, which failed to pass due to a tie vote, if you recall. Um, it should be noted that the applicant has taken the concerns that were expressed by some of the board members with respect to the previous proposal, and they have attempted to address those in this new application. Um, specifically, this proposal reduces the overall size of the stone base for the sign, which you can see in this rendering here in this picture, um, as well as the plaque itself. And there is a total reduction in the overall square footage, as well as a change in the style of lettering for the sign. Um, this proposal does meet the conditions for a variance that are listed in um, the zoning regulations, as well as meeting the design guidelines for the Special Capital Zoning District. Here is a PVA map that shows you the location of the property. And here is a historic Sanborn uh, fire insurance map from 1907. The property is not uh, on this map yet. You can see it was a part of a much, much larger parcel. Uh, that was associated with a historic call, house called the Magnolias, which burned in the early 20th century. Here is a site plan that show, it shows the building and the features on the lot, as well as the size and location of the proposed signage down there at the bottom. Um, and you can see the relative sizes of all those features. The bronze plaque is the part that requires the variance. They are permitted to have three square feet per the sign regulations, and they are requesting five square feet. The previous proposal was for six square feet. The dimensions of the stone base that will hold the sign have been reduced from the previous proposal. The bottom base is proposed to be 74 inches wide, a reduction of 10 inches. The stone face will be 62 inches wide, also reduced by 10 inches. The total square footage of the monument sign will be 21.5 square feet, which is a reduction of 4.5 square feet from the previous proposal. The proposed lettering on the plaque has been modified to a more classic style font in keeping with other signs found along Capitol Avenue. Uh, this rendering shows plantings and small landscape lighting to illuminate the sign at night. The sign is similar to the signs installed at 105 West 3rd Street, which is one block north of this particular location. That property contains three monument signs, all with plaques that are larger than the one the applicant is proposing. The total signage included including the stone bases at 105 West 3rd Street, totals 69 square feet. In order to approve the request for the variance, and here are some other um, views of those signs that are located at 105 West 3rd. Okay. So in order to approve the request for the variance for the larger plaque, there must be positive findings for the conditions listed in Article 18.051. Four of the five conditions are applicable to this request. Staff has analyzed each, and positive findings were established for all four. In addition, staff finds the stone base for the plaque meets the design guidelines for new construction and also meets the zoning regulations pertaining to monument signs in Article 13. And based on the information contained in the application and staff's evaluation of the conditions that must be met, staff recommends the approval of the variance 
to allow for a plaque size of five square feet. Also, based on the information contained in the application and staff's evaluation within the context of the property's significance, key features, integrity, neighborhood character, and preservation goals for the City of Frankfurt, staff recommends the ARB issue a certificate of appropriateness for this proposal. The plans as submitted are compatible in concept with the requirements of the zoning regulations and the findings on page five of the staff report. If the ARB elects to issue a certificate of appropriateness, staff recommends the conditions found on page six of the staff report and also on this slide um, be applied. Any questions? Yes. So, based on the type of sign that it is, do you have any idea how difficult um, it might be if, should it be five or ten years from now, it need to be removed? Is that, is that possible or how complicated might that be? I wouldn't think it would be very difficult at all. I mean, it's going to be four feet wide, it's stone, um, it's like a section of fencing. Okay, thank you. I have a question. On the rendering, the, the photographs that we were sent, um, and there's not a page on it, but um, they show the sign behind the stone and iron fence. Yes. And then one of the renderings, part of the stone is removed. Anybody notice that? I couldn't decide if it had fallen or are you talking about this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it looks like they part of the fallen. If part of the stone has been removed, I don't I, I'm guessing maybe digitally, I don't know. I didn't go by there. Oh, are you talking about the fence? Yes. yes. That section of stone is actually removed. It is gone. It is gone. Okay. Um I remember working on the previous application and there was some discussion about that and why that was. And we were looking at historic photos and there was a very large tree in that location. So we kind of hypothesized that tree roots had something to do with that. Okay. It was just behind the fence. Good to know. Okay. Because it stated earlier that it was a significant feature. Yes. of that property right and i didn't know whether it was they removed were removing it from better visibility <laughs> right right no it, it is currently okay. gone and there has been a a piece of ironwork inserted although you can tell it's not part of the original design right. okay good to know thank you any other questions for staff okay. I have to say I'm still a little disappointed with it. It doesn't look disproportionate to me and the material is still. Uh, is there someone that can <laughs> yes. this particular? Oh, sorry, I'm stopping I'm Karen Finan. I'm with the one in KY Alliance. Thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. Do you agree with the findings and the suggestions by the staff? I do. It took us a year to come back because we wanted to do it the right way and we wanted to work very closely within the neighborhood, within the planning and, and zoning guidelines so that it did fit within the integrity of the neighborhood. Um, if I may, the facility has been a fabulous extension for Northern Kentucky and Frankfurt. It has allowed us access to resources, legislators, and a walk to the Capitol. It's been convenient because when you're two hours away, having a place where the community can come and co-work, hold events, visit with legislators is very important. And when we opened the building just in time for COVID, it was a very slow <laughs> opening. And so it was kind of tough for us to see how much would this building be utilized. And we've made a substantial investment in purchasing the facility, renovating it. Um, and this year, our expectations have really been met. I think we've been able to, in a very controlled way, um, have people come to the facility, utilize it, and I'm seeing an increased um, need for the availability with it. Um, we also have a property manager that comes in two to three times a week. Um, if we have any type of event, they're typically there the same day to clean up. And then the, 
folks who sponsor or co-work in the space when they come mm -hmm. from Northern Kentucky. They have a lot of pride in the facility, so their eyes and ears when my team isn't there as well. So the last thing we would want to do is introduce a look or something in the front yard that just didn't flow <coughs> with the investment that we've put into the house or the investment in the neighborhood. And so I've appreciated the guidance that we've gotten from this board and from Vicki and Jordan um, in putting this variance back together. <coughs> and I do appreciate the, the uh, comment about the digital because in the day of AI and digital conversions, um, it, it, that could easily have been done. Right. You know, you drive by, you don't look at you it. You don't look at it. It's yeah. detailed. It's, yeah. So. And I think one of the things, we looked at a number of alternatives in terms of what else could we do to create the visibility and the look. And I had many days with my team out on the street where we tried different things to, you know, create a, a visible look that really flowed with the building itself. Um, so we did look at several alternatives. But that fence really is a hindrance um, because we were unable to put anything on the actual fence itself. I just have one question. So if our guidelines say allowing three square feet and this is five, what made you decide that it wasn't possible to do the same with your message at the three feet? The fence just was is a big hindrance. The view, it, it really gets hidden, and that's where we looked at alternatives in terms of even placement of the existing signage. What else could we do? How could we, how could we make that visible? Um, and so, looking at the five, we felt like that was a good compromise, and it also would be able to be seen, um, but still very understated within the yard because the yard comes up on a hill. And we look to put it not at the crest of the hill, but just kind of nestled in that lawn part. Any other Thank questions? You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any discussion? I think it's great that it's smaller, but I still think it's three feet what the guidelines since especially since that section that the fencing that you pointed out or the stone part the solid part is it's gone it's gone now yeah but I don't like it but I think probably we would be we should oh my gosh. I think it's proportionally not good and I don't think it looks really bad well It would be very hard to see if it were, if it were, if you would not yeah. see it at all through that gate. I went by there and okay. sit up inside of the gate. So That's what I'm trying, yeah. That's what I did. Okay. You, couldn't, you wouldn't have seen it. <coughs> We're ready to entertain a motion. Do we need to do two motions, one for the variance and one for the um, certificate of appropriateness? What do you think? Not unless you're going to actually okay. not grant one, then you could make a separate motion. Okay. I think you combine them because it's appropriate. I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve a variance and a certificate of appropriateness to construct a monument sign at 418 Capitol Avenue, um, taking into account all of the staff's findings of fact and suggestions. And conditions. And conditions. Yeah. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sands? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. In accordance with Articles 4 and 17 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Jen Williamson on behalf of Will Crimbo, Anchor Property Group, 
is requesting a certificate of appropriateness for revisions to previously approved plans for new construction at the property located at 725 Woodland Avenue. The property is more particularly identified as PVA map number 062-14-07-023.00. Uh, this application will also be familiar to you. Uh, it is in the Special Capital Zoning District and it is for new construction on a lot which will be subdivided into two parcels after the construction takes place. Um, the Certificate of Appropriateness for Demolition was approved in April of 2022 for this lot and recently renewed again in March of 2023. Um, this application is for revisions to a previously approved proposal. Previously, the ARB approved plans for a 2,200 square foot single family home at the front of the lot. This proposal reduces the square footage of that home to 1,500 square feet. At the rear of the lot, with a future address on Shaw Lane, the ARB approved plans for the construction of a duplex with 2,880 square feet. The new plans are for another single family home with 1,015 square feet. Uh, as with the previous proposal, the plans are compatible with the special capital design guidelines. Here is a PDA map showing you the location of the um, existing lot and a 1912 Sanborn map showing the original development on the block. Uh, the original house was one of a series of gable and wing style houses on the block, which established an existing rhythm, um, which you can see in these photos. And the proposed house emulates the rhythm that existed and incorporates um, some of the architectural features of the previous house, which is the one on the right there, uh, including that cornice return um, on each end of the front gable. Here are some renderings of the plans. Um, this is of the front of the house, the west elevation. Uh, this is the south elevation which also uh, has the proposed materials labeled. The north elevation and the east elevation, which is the back of the house. The proposal for the single family home at the rear of the lot is significantly reduced in size from the previously approved duplex. Here's a site plan showing the relative positions of the proposed structures. There will be more green space between the structures now due to the reduction in size. We have the front elevation here. This is the, the face of the house and it will face Shaw Lane. North elevation, south elevation, and the west or rear elevation, which will face the interior of the lot. <coughs> Just to give you an idea of the overall change, this is a schematic of the previously approved proposal. And here is the new one with a reduced overall volume and less intensity of use on the site. Based on the information uh, contained in the application and staff's evaluation within the context of the neighborhood's significance, key features, integrity, character, and preservation goals for the City of Frankfurt, staff recommends that this revised proposal be approved by the Architectural Review Board. The plans as submitted are compatible in concept with the requirements of the zoning regulations, the special capital design guidelines and the suggested findings on page four of your staff report. Uh, if the ARB elects to issue a certificate of appropriateness for this request, staff recommends the following conditions be applied. Um, and I'd like to make one amendment to condition number five um, because Don pointed out I've worded it a little differently here than I do 
um, most of the time. Um, I'd, I'd like <coughs> that condition to read, any additional projects requiring a building permit shall require review and approval of the Architectural Review Board unless a certificate of no exterior effect is issued. Do you have any questions for me? We have someone representing the applicant. Hi, Jen Williamson, Spangler Williamson, for us on Walking Street. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to share with us? I, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you all have. Do you agree with the uh, yes. findings and conditions? Okay. Yes, we do. Anyone have any questions for Has this been done somewhere else in Frankfurt? What do you where mean? they've split a lot and put two buildings on it? Does anybody know that? There are several examples in South Frankfurt where lots have been subdivided over the years. Um, I can't think of a, like a super recent example, but it is an existing condition on a lot of the blocks in the neighborhood. Okay. 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 I don't have a question per se, but I would like to just point out that there is potential for archaeology. It could be interesting, um, just for the record and just to let you know. Are there any plans for anybody to monitor any kind of potential archaeology? We don't no. have purview to do that under the guidelines, as far as I know. No, there there are no plans for that. But if I might ask, is it the back of the lot that offers more potential, or where the existing structure is that offers more potential? I honestly don't know. Okay. Um, because I haven't um, done a, enough detailed in-depth of the actual ground since it's not part of the application. But anywhere there were structures before, especially since you've got an intact wall, um, yeah. or portion of the wall, <coughs> then that would indicate that there's potential for something to be re remain intact. Yeah, it's, a, it's an early area, one of the earlier areas in Frankfurt. When is the demolition uh, planned? What's that? When is the demolition planned? Uh, I, I do not know the answer to okay. that question. The yes. house that's at the front of the property has the design. I didn't pull out my. So the design for the previous house was yes. uh, larger. The plan was organized to kind of go to sort of a split level so that we could maintain that presence to the street with right. the earlier proposal. And it got a bit complicated in the framing to try and occupy that upper area. Now this is a simplified plan that can be constructed for less cost. Generally, the interest is a reflection on the market and trying to find a price point that works for this particular location. So now, rather than having a sort of split level, mm -hmm. It's all on one level with an unfinished basement. And the windows that you saw to the back on the lower level in the, right. in the foundation area, yeah. that's, that's too unfinished space. Right. But if right. the buyer were to want to do something with that in the future in terms of finishing it out, it might be something they can do. Yeah, because I feel like I saw the original plans like on real estate websites or something. And now yes, I think that they, they were... They, I, I think that it went out there and, in, and in a response to what their, the feedback that they were getting, the, the plan was reduced in scale to get a price okay. point that is more, um, that, that's more marketable. Anyone else have any more questions? Any discussion, or are we ready to entertain a motion? I think this, the smaller scale actually like fits into the 
the neighborhood it does. more appropriately than the previous. So. I agree. I like it. Okay, you want to try? I would move that we, um, oops, I lost it. Oh, there we go. Uh, that we approve the request for a certificate of appropriateness for revisions to a pre previously approved plans for new construction of property located at 725 Woodland Avenue um, based on the findings and staff report on page four and the revised um, conditions on page five. I'll second. Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sands? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. In accordance with Articles 4 and 17 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Jen Williamson, on behalf of Taylor Marshall Property LLC, is requesting a certificate of appropriateness to consolidate two empty lots and build a single family home at 446-448 Stanley Street. The properties are more particularly identified as PVA map number 062-32-06-006.00 and 062-32-06-007.00. This application is also in the Special Capital Zoning District. Uh, the proposal is for uh, new construction of a single single family home with 1,275 square feet on consolidated lots that total 6,000 square feet. Uh, this proposal meets the special capital design guidelines. Um, here is a PVA map showing both lots. Only one of them is outlined in the blue line, but it also includes the one below. Uh, you can um, see adjacent to these lots there are both single family homes and also outbuildings along Stanley Street which is really um, very much like Shaw Lane more of an alley than a true street the updated 1925 Sanborn map shows two small frame houses on these lots in 1955 I've got them circled here uh, the house at 448 may have been demolished prior to the historic zoning being adopted. The demolition of the house at 446 was approved by the ARB in 1989. And here are some photos, just to kind of give you some context. Here is a picture of the lot, the consolidated lot. Um, here's an image of the site plan showing the position of the house on the consolidated lots. Here is a close-up of that plan. Uh, notice the entrance is located on the interior of the lot, um, which is not so odd given the arrangements of the buildings that currently exist that are backed right up against the alley, kind of um, provide that um, zero setback situation. Um, but even though the back of the house will be facing the street, there is still articulation and architectural detailing at the rear of the building. So it's not a completely flat elevation without any character. You can see a photo of or rendering of it here. So this is the east elevation, the north, south, and then the west elevation, which faces the interior of the lot. And that's where the front entrance is. Here's a rendering that shows its position on Stanley Street. Also, this helps you visualize how it will look there. And there's another rendering showing the back. Based on the information contained in the application and staff's evaluation, within the context of the neighborhood significance, key features, integrity, character, and preservation goals for the city of Frankfurt, staff recommends this revised proposal. Oops, sorry, that shouldn't be revised. It's 
staff recommends that this proposal be approved by the Architectural Review Board and the plans as submitted are compatible in concept with the requirements of the zoning regulations, the special capital design guidelines, and the suggested findings on page three of the staff report. Should you elect to issue a COA for this request, staff recommends the following conditions be applied. And again, I would like to amend the last condition, number three, to read, any additional projects requiring a building permit shall require review and approval by the Architectural Review Board unless a certificate of no exterior effect is issued. Do you have any questions? <coughs> I think it's interesting that we're starting to see more info, and <coughs> that's definitely a good thing, but these initial projects are setting precedents, and so they'll maybe require a little more speculation than follow-ups. Um, and I just think Probably it would be good to be vigilant, obviously, as we are, but, you know, that applicants and, and developers who are doing these infill projects do work closely with the staff um, and adhere to the guidelines. You know, I think we're in an interesting place where this is maybe a little new, and so just... Yeah. Um, I can say there has been a lot of um, collaboration, um, particularly th this month with staff on, on most of the applications in front of you this evening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Thank you for, thank you for all of your work. <laughs> I, I do have a question though. It seems backwards to me. The, um, the the rear faces the street. Am yeah. I understanding have, this correctly? Have you been on Stanley Lane before? And oh that yeah. Picture? Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I have. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so going back to this photo here, right? It's very very narrow, and there are existing structures, and they they are some of them face forward. Um, there are outbuildings as you get further down in this area that you can't see. Um, so the setback is kind of established along here without much availability of, of frontage. And, you know, by turning the building to the interior, the resident is going to have a little more privacy and security, I think, yeah. which is probably, I mean, the architect will speak to this, but um, as I was viewing it, I could see that being the motivating factor. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's not just a flat facade right. facing the back. So you still have enough architectural interests that feel like it does fit with the character of what is there right now. Okay. This is, there are a couple of at least two, maybe three buildings that face Stanley Street mm -hmm. where, where I live, where the entrance is on the interior either because they're accessory dwelling units or just workshops or yeah but it's pretty popular one of them is oh. yeah it also strikes me as I mean I can't be I can't imagine being invited to someone's home and when I get there I'm at the back how do I know to go around to the front back after it Anyway, that's sort of beside the point, I guess. There, there is historic precedence for it. So, and it, it will definitely flow with kind of like the, the design of the alley and the way that a lot of, I guess looking at it from aerial images, you know, it would blend. So like when you come to my house and I say, look for the silo and my house is behind the silo, they'll mm -hmm. probably just tell people mm -hmm. just for. <laughs> I understand. I understand. It just, it is different. So, why were windows not put? 
um, I don't, I'm looking south, on the north and south bays of the facade, or the, yeah, facade is the rear, it's confusing. There's a window. Go, if you go to the rear, if you go to the rear elevation, you have windows under that gable. Right. What was the reason not to put windows in the side bays? I'm, I'm going to let the architect answer that <laughs> question, but I, I will just offer you that the views directly to the alley are probably not that attractive. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, by having the window raised, you still get the natural light without having to look directly at the alley. Right. Okay. Well, and, and building on the other comments, it does offer more privacy, Right. I guess, for people walking. Because there will be people walking, walking by there. very close to the, yeah, to the wall. Any other questions for me? So I'm Jen Williamson, Spangler Williamson, and we're at 407 Wapping Street. Um, I'll talk more about this one than the last one. Um, first, I wanted to point out, um, we have a very restricted site here because of the number of utilities and utility easements that are required in the back two-thirds of the lots. If you can see on these, um, we've mapped out all the easements that we have been asked by the TRT team to ensure, and there is a sewer lateral line, which is kind of the biggest, bulkiest easement, but in addition to that, there are some overhead power lines that Frankfurt Plant Board asked for us to map and provide easements to. So we've got a property that has the potential for a good grassy lawn, but really no development potential for that. So we really can't set the building much further back from um, Stanley. Um, and then uh, to the question about the windows, um, the design preferences that private yard that the owner would have with the glass, with the with the porch and the space of the uh, of the plan opening up with windows to that yard. We did put, um, as Vicki mentioned, we did put, I'm trying to get there. We did put these horizontal windows on the center living space that come to Stanley. Um, but the two rooms on either side of that that are facing Stanley are bedrooms and uh, for privacy. And then also just like if a vehicle's driving through at night, just the, the, the light reflection. So we have put the emergency exit windows that are required by code um, to the sides of those bedrooms rather than behind. And then also, they're not terribly large bedrooms, so we've got that solid wall to put the headboard on. Um, so um, that's, that's the, we did, we did make the effort of getting some um, detail to that wall with the gable centered piece that is at the living space the, the the unit lays out with like sort of an open living space and kitchen that kind of flows at the center and then three bedrooms on the sides um, so we did put the windows here to give some articulation to that facade facing um, Stanley and then we've detailed sort of corner pilasters on the corners that center section projects a a couple of feet or something and uh, we're doing a detail at the at the top of the pilasters of sort of a freeze board and little detail on the cornice so that maybe it has a you know some articul ar architectural elements there I'd also point out that we have we do have this rear uh, doorway uh, with the kitchen and this rear porch but we also have this side entrance and I sort of imagine that the mailbox would be mounted somewhere here so um, there's sort of I think the gap between the structures um, here is narrower because we're closer to the required setback for that uh, for the Kentucky uh, residential code but um, on this side we've got a wider opening so I think there's a sort of natural sense to kind of walk that way and um, 
and as I mentioned, I think probably the mailbox or whatever would be mounted to the structure on this side by the, the side entrance. And probably coming and going, the owner would be going in and out those that door, most likely. Do you, um, have you had a chance to look at the yes. conditions and findings of that? Right? Yes, and and yes. And we've been through them and we're fine with them. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion? Can I find a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve a certificate of appropriateness to consolidate two empty lots and build a single family home at 446 to 448 Stanley Street, um, taking into account the findings of facts and the conditions. I'll second. Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. In accordance with Articles 4, 17, 18, and 19 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Joe Johnson of Limestone Rentals requests two conditional use permits to operate short term rentals at the properties located at 113 and 1 115 Miro Street and 117 119 Miro Street. The property is more particularly identified as PBA map numbers 061-4206-003.00 and 061-4206-002.00. So uh, we have two applications for two conditional use permits for short-term rentals. These are adjoining duplex properties located in the Special Historic Zone. Uh, these were both previously associated with the bed and breakfast property that was um, that's located at 519 Ann Street. And they have recently been subdivided from that property and sold to the applicant. So you notice we did one agenda item, but I've written two staff reports and the buildings are identical. So I will make one presentation tonight um, and then you can handle the approval for each separately at the end. Okay. Um, these are two small masonry duplexes with hipped roofs and they were constructed uh, at the turn to the 20th century. They are both contributing structures to the Old State House and Central Frankfurt National Register Historic Districts. Here's a PBA map showing their location on Miro Street. Um, only one of them is highlighted um, by the blue line, um, but we are talking about both that one, which is 113115, and the parcel just to the left of that one, which is 117119. And here they are shown on the 1901 Sanborn Fire Insurance map, which is the very first year that they show up. Short-term rentals are a conditional use in this district. There is a bed and breakfast operating at the adjoining property, and there is another short-term rental at 522 Ann Street, which is across the street from the bed and breakfast property. Um, however, that one is actually in a different zoning district. That is not special historic. Um, and these properties are located on a very busy street that primarily serves traffic coming to the large state office buildings and also exiting to 127 South. You can kind of get a feel for that in these photographs here. The Planning Commission reviewed and approved proposed regulations on April 13th that would put a cap on the number of short-term rentals in the Special Historic Zone. Those changes to the regulations still need to be approved by the Board of Commissioners. These two applications will bring the total number of short-term rentals in the Special Historic Zone to eight, which is in line with the cap that was proposed. The proposals meet the parking requirements in Article 12. 
There are two street spaces in front of each building. The proposals also meet the relevant conditions in Article 19 with positive findings as shown here. And based on the information contained in the applications and staff's evaluation within the context of the property's significance, neighborhood character, and preservation goals for the city of Frankfurt, compliance with the existing zoning regulations, and compliance with the existing comprehensive plan, staff recommends that this proposal be approved by the Architectural Review Board. Each request for each conditional use permit is compatible with the requirements of the zoning regulations and the suggested findings on page four of each staff report. And if the ARB elects to issue a CUP for each property, staff recommends the conditions found on page four be applied to each property, which are also summarized here on this slide. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Joe Johnson, Limestone uh, Investment, or this one's Reynolds, I am 305 Wilkinson. Okay. Have you read the findings and agree with the staff? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the, the only question I had was on um, because of the cap, which is a possible recent addition here, the, the fifth condition, which is that um, this is not transferable. You know, essentially it won't transfer with the property. That's the only uh, condition that gives me a little pause, only because if if uh, if we're if it's a cap issue, and I'm I make improvements based on revenue uh, that is projected for short short term rentals, which is going to allow us to do a lot of the things that need to be done every 150 years kind of things, you know, like these these things need some love. And it's not, <clears throat> it will somewhat dictate how far we go on our renovations. So if, if we have this, essentially this income stream built in, then how, how um, if something happens to me and my state needs to sell this property and we go to transfer it to uh, somebody else, but there's a cap on the on the uh, short term rental possibility, then it's immediately so devalued to some yeah, degree. That's an issue you're going to have to take up with the ordinance. Uh, at this point in time, we have no conditional use permits that are transferable within the city of Frankfurt. It's all they'll have to be renewed. We'll have to make an application. Yeah, I guess so, I'm going to sound like my six-year-old, but I guess why would be the why is it why? I mean, what is the theory that would that would help? Sound me. like me when I was a parent of Combs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the regulations have been set, and it's something that we can't address. You'll have to address. That no, way. I understand that you can't address the regulations, but I feel like that the conditional use conditions. Like this, the condition that it, it can't be transferable. That's on every one. Yes. I, I know it is on every one because I've been on this board and I always yeah. wondered why we put it on there. And once again, I don't know, but that's part of the regs that we have. And so you're, this it's, board can't ignore that reg. No, so that, that that's my question. It is a requirement of a conditional use that it cannot go with the property. That, that is what happens, yes. Well, I mean, I know it's because what happens. Because of the regulation. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's um, a requirement in the regulations, and we tend to put it on every single one. So yeah, yes. Yeah. Like no, I understand. I understand that it, and it makes sense in most situations where we could, you know, and if the ability to get the short term, to get it approved for the next person, but then if, if some, you know, I, I think of my estate, my dad was an attorney, I'm worst case scenario, I think of my estate. Because this is a long-term hold for us. We're not planning on selling it. But if something happens and it's based on an income stream 
that is not possible other than any reason other than the fact that it's not transferable. It's not because it's not a good use. It's not a good place for short-term rental. And, and so maybe this, and, and I'm sorry I, for bringing I, it up. You make an excellent point. I'm just saying that the text amendment that included that aid uh, is going to the city commission. And I would highly suggest you appear and let them okay. know this concern for yeah. a well, property owner that even though you come under the cap, it could make a big difference in the future. Well, somebody that doesn't get so nervous talking can should should do that. If anybody's listening, I, I think you're doing a great job. So <laughs> well, it, it uh, <laughs> takes years off my life, so I, 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 hate, <laughs> I hate that. It. But other than that, I mean, uh, uh, Vicky's a genius, so I think it. I think it. I'm. I, I appreciate all the work and. Uh, um, but anyway, that that's something that I know that there's concerns about short-term rentals and. In general, and there's, you know, it, that that is something that I think really needs to be thought through of the effects, you know. And I know everybody, you know, it's small town, so it's something we need to be thinking about: is what what does this cap do to to somebody in, in this specific? I mean, this is a really good example because, I mean, this is a great spot. It's not in a, it's not in, in the middle of a neighborhood. It's this is, you know, adjoined by parking lots, huge transportation building and a bed and breakfast. And, you know, it's it to me this is one that it's it, the the cap and the transferability is something that we we as a community need to address. So anyway, thank you all. Do you all have any questions at this time? Back. No? Thank you. Are we ready to have a discussion or are we ready to have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. Hold on. For both? No, we're supposed to move individually. I would like to move that we approve the conditional use permit to operate a non owner occupied short term rental at 113 and 115 Nero based on the findings of Fox and staff suggestions. Second. Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sands? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Can we have a motion for 117 through 119? I'll make a motion. Okay. To approve 117 through 119 Merrill Street for the conditional use permit uh, to operate a non owner occupied short term rental. Um, in accordance with the findings, the facts, and the staff conditions. Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Cross? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. We are ready to go to number seven. In accordance with Articles 4, 13, 16, and 17 of the City of Frankfurt Zoning Ordinance, Bill Cole of Firehouse Investments, LLC, is requesting a certificate of appropriateness for a front blade sign for the property located at 307 West Main Street. The property is more particularly identified as PVA map number 061-2411-008.00. Okay, we are at the final application for this evening. Uh, this property is located in the Central Business Historic Zoning District. Uh, the application is for 307 West Main Street. Uh, this building actually contains 307 and 309. So this uh, particular application is only for one side of the building. Uh, this building was built in 1868. It is a contributing structure to the Frankfurt Commercial National Register District and the Central Frankfurt National Register District. It was, it has been extensively rehabbed in recent years and its contribution to the historic environment downtown has been um, significant. This is a project that is utilizing historic rehabilitation tax credits and this proposal is designed with that fact in mind as it must comply with federal preservation standards in order to receive the credits. Uh, here is a PVA map showing the location of 307 on the east side of the building. Here's an 1886 Sanborn fire insurance map. You can see the engine house labeled there. 
This is a 2010 photo uh, provided by the Capital City Museum showing the conditions before the recent rehabilitation. And here is a recent photo for comparison. This proposal uh, is for a blade sign. Uh, on the left is a shop drawing of the proposed sign which will be installed on the storefront, uh, projecting from one of the pilasters next to the entrance. The dimensions are 48 inches wide by 32 inches tall. The words coffee and the upper round edge of the sign will be lit with neon. Neon signs were a historic feature of our downtown for decades and this sign includes uh, a rendering showing how it will look uh, in its location after installation. I have a few historic photos from the Capital City Museum that provide context for the types of signage previous um, to this district and in this particular area. In the upper left, you can see a picture out, outside the front of the fire house. And next door, there's a, a fascia sign for Studebaker, Studebaker wagons. Um, and below, uh, at the time the building was auctioned in the 1950s, um, the signage had changed pretty dramatically. You can see the front of the adjacent building is now covered, um, and there is a canopy with large lettering. Here's a couple other angles, um, including the one on the upper left where you can see the blade sign for the former location of the State Journal. So um, staff has worked very closely with the applicant on this proposal. Uh, we feel it meets the design guidelines as well as all of the stipulations for signage in the Central Business Zoning District in Article 4. Up to 5% of the size of the storefront can be allocated to signage. Uh, this sign, which is approximately 11 square feet, is about 3.5% of the size of the storefront only at 307. So there's still plenty of allowance for signage for whatever goes next door in the future. So based on the information contained in the application and staff's evaluation within the context of the property's significance, key features, integrity, neighborhood character, and preservation goals for the City of Frankfurt, staff recommends that this proposal be approved by the Architectural Review Board. The plans as submitted are compatible with the zoning regulations as well as the Central Business Zoning District Design Guidelines and the suggested findings on page five of your staff report. If the ARB elects to issue a certificate of appropriateness, staff recommends the following conditions found on this slide be applied. This is an amendment to your staff report. Um, these are slightly different. Um, I erroneously included conditions for attachment to masonry, which of course, that's because I used a template from a previous report where there was a sign being attached to masonry that is not happening here. It's going on the storefront on the pilaster. So um, the only two conditions that are relevant are the ones listed here, that the existing open building permit will be amended to include the work approved in this request and a sign permit shall be issued. Any additional projects requiring a zoning or building permit shall require review and approval by the ARB unless a certificate of no exterior effect is issued. And that's all I have. Any questions for me? Is the applicant on uh, here? Yes. Hi, I'm Jen Williamson, Spangler Williamson, 407 Wapping, and I'm representing the Firehouse Investments in this hearing. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have about the sign. And you agree with the findings and conditions? Yes, yes. Okay. We're, yes. Including the two new ones? Yes. Yeah. Right. Any questions for Okay. All right. We're excited to have a coffee house. I know. I'm <laughs> so <laughs>
Oh, the exterior. Here's my example. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. And that exterior is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It's, um, yes, um, I'm very proud of this project, and I think everyone that is involved is very proud of this project, and I think this is really an excellent investment for downtown, and I very much appreciate, appreciate the owner's financial investment in the property. Yeah, it's going to be pretty nice. Well, with any discussion on the board, or are we ready to entertain a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay. I will make a motion to approve a certificate of appropriateness for a front blade sign at the property located at 307 West Main Street, um, including the findings of fact and the conditions for approval. I'll second. Okay. Motion is second. Ready for the vote? Ms. Turner? Yes. Ms. Sands? Yes. Ms. Conkle? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Krause? Yes. Oh, she carries. All right. Do you have any citizen comments before we adjourn? Okay. Having heard none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. We are adjourned. <laughs>